Hi, Mark here from Success with Options. As promised, I'm coming back to you with a short video on how to use a neat little uh, new feature that showed up sometime back on the uh, the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, so I'm going to show it to you, and we'll see if you find it as interesting as I do. Uh, to begin with, what I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, uh, trade analysis and some of the probabilities, and then we'll actually take advantage of, of this on the chart. Uh, so. In some of my other videos, I've covered a little bit on how to use uh, analytics and do the uh, the analyze uh, use the analyze tab, which is in many cases intimidating for people. It's probably one of the most intimidating tabs on the uh, Thinkorswim platform. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to click on it. Don't be too intimidated. Here we go. Um, we currently have the SPY up, and I'll go ahead and use that as an example because that actually happens to be an instrument I like to trade, and I currently actually have some positions on there. Um, what I want to do though is switch over. There's a number of different views here. This is the risk profile. There's another profile or another um, kind of view that's called the probability analysis. And what we'll see is is that it actually um, it, it takes a look at the probability of the price of in this case the SPY over time. So essentially what it's done is is it, it looks at volatility and uses the volatility to come up with a predictor of sorts. Um, I would say uses it to generate a mathematical probability of the SPY being at a certain price uh, at a certain point in time in the future. And that's totally based on, on volatility. So as you can imagine, what this is really showing you is, is that uh, given a certain volatility, the further out in time you go, the higher likelihood that there's going to be quite a swing in the price. And the closer in in time, the less likely. So let me use a good example. Let's say the market opens Monday. What's the probability of the uh, the SPX currently trading at 199? So what is the probability that it trades at 205 on Monday morning? Or what's the probability of it trading at 196 on Monday? Pretty low, actually. But as time goes on, let's say two weeks from now, what's the probability of the SPX or the SPY in this case trading at 205 or above or below 196? Well, certainly a lot higher, right? Because of the volatility and just the, the probable move of the market over time. And what we'll see is, is that the higher the volatility, the broader that this thing becomes. So it will become much, much wider with a higher volatility and much, much narrower on a lower volatility. So that's essentially what this probability analysis chart is designed to show you is for any given instrument, what is the probability of, uh, of a certain price being hit uh, at a certain point in time? And it's using standard deviation and you know the volatility swing and all that kind of stuff to determine that. So in this case, it's probability of, of in the money. I could actually switch that to probability out of the money. So that's probably what you're you're more looking at. And so we can actually then look at it. So the probability of being out of the money, so picking something above this or below this, um, gives you a pretty good probability over time. So that's kind of what we're looking at. That's kind of an interesting chart. And I just wanted to show you that because that's the basis of this study. Uh, that I will show you that is now available on the toss chart. Uh, let me bring this over here. And um, what we're looking at is a very similar kind of a thing being shown on the toss chart. Now, this isn't available yet, to my knowledge, on the profit charts. But for the toss charts, we can bring up the SPY, or any instrument for that matter. And based on the probability of um, or based on the volatility, I should say, of the underlying instrument, the SPY or the DIA or IWM, it's going to make a projection out in time of what that price might be. So, uh, for example, at expiration, and we're looking at boundaries here. So this is the um, so this would be the October expiration. This would be November expiration, and sometime in between would be you know some of the other weekly <coughs> weekly expirations. So if you think about it, these are the standard expiration weeks, and then at every week boundary, there's a weekly expiration. So if you kind of look at these things, the probability of being at 205 by um, October what is that? The 16th, October 16th, uh, is is reasonably high, right? 
So we could be at 205 or we could below be down to 196.66 by that October expiration. Why is that interesting? Well, if you're picking uh, your options and you're picking something that's designed to expire uh, at a certain point in time, this can help you kind of evaluate. It's another view of probability. Now, what I am not saying is that you should never pick anything inside of that band. That is, that is not the point of this as much as it is to give you a perspective on at this point in time, with this given amount of volatility, what is the projected range that that, that particular um, instrument might be. In this case, we can see that out in time, we could see that, let's say by November expiration, that the SPY could be as high as 212 or as low as 190, uh, 189. So all that's saying is that's a probability that that could happen, but we don't really know which is going to take place. And in particular, if you're just building your trades based on probabilities alone, there's an equal probability it could go up as could go down. But we know from technical analysis that there's another way to look at this, right? So if I'm looking at the overall uh, chart here, and I've already seen a big swing up, what is the probability that in one week or two weeks or three weeks that the SPY might be down below the upper range and perhaps above the lower range. It's actually pretty good that, 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 that at some point we may see this run up, run into some kind of resistance, and then fall back down into this range. So this is saying this is the probable range that the SPY could be in somewhere in here. So is it risky for me to put on, let's say, a short 205, 207 call spread on the SPY? Um, potentially, potentially, although, again, with a little bit of additional technical analysis, I'd say that the odds actually um, might swing a little more in favor of seeing the SPY be a little bit lower just because of the move that we've seen. Uh, coupled with the fact that we're seeing some upside resistance and what this chart doesn't show uh, that I can actually add is um, I can put on a study that is the moving average. Yeah, there it is. Simple moving average. So I can add the simple moving average to the... All right, there we go. Simple moving average and it's currently set to 9. So let's go... Uh, let's make that a 30-day just for just for grins okay so we'll put a 30-day moving average on it and uh, now we see that we're above the 30-day moving average and of course I could add another one uh, while I'm at it let me go back and show you how to add that probability of expiring it's called the probability of expiring cone it's kind of an odd name uh, you just kind of have to remember the probability of expiring and then just kind of go down through the list and the way that you add that study is just to locate it on the chart select it and oh, actually double ch double click on it and add it to the to the chart so how, that's how you get it on there um, let me add one more simple moving average because it's the one that I think is kind of interesting uh, for this and what we'll do is add a two hundred day moving average So now we have a 200 day and where's the 200 day? It's actually up above the current price. So given the current market action where we've seen some lower um, double bottom kind of action and behavior and now we're up close to the, we actually closed higher than, than anything in the last two months. I mean, the prices basically are equal in terms of the highs, but the actual close is higher than uh, anything that we've seen in the last uh, basically, I think that's two months time, right? So, you know, we're kind of in that range where we could see additional move to the upside. But wait a minute, where is the 200-day moving average? Well, currently the 200-day moving average is set at 190, uh, not showing it, but um, doesn't fit on here. But you can see that it's somewhere around 206, right? So we're above 205 by a little bit. Uh, this is going to maybe come down a little bit, but we can see that with a little technical analysis, we have some pressure on the top side. So you can't just use probability alone to make a determination, and you shouldn't have probability kind of scare you away from a particular position. I find it useful to look at the probability combined with technical analysis to help me kind of figure out a position 
and to also evaluate the likelihoods. Again, there's never a guarantee on any of this and you should always use appropriate money management and all of the typical things that I, I encourage uh, folks to, to consider uh, when evaluating this stuff. But I find it a particularly interesting view because now I have both the probability view and my technical analysis tools at my disposal where I can evaluate a given position and determine whether or not I'm relatively safe. So in one of my prior videos, I was looking at setting up a 205-207 call spread with about 30 days to expiration or so, which would actually put me into the November expiration, I think, or somewhere in this time frame. So, um, you know, if we go ahead and zoom in a little bit here, uh, I think we might have been looking at this week or even the, uh, the November expiration week. So am I safe? Well, right now I have kind of the thing that sort of clips off the top end of where this could possibly go, in my opinion, is the 200-day moving average. In other words, what I think could happen is that as this moves up, it's going to run into overhead resistance. And if it continues to run without any kind of a pullback, the odds are that the further it moves, the more tension it's going to experience, which means the probability is, is that it's more likely going to be on the lower side of this probability range rather than the upper side. So you have to kind of imagine that right down the middle is kind of the no movement kind of probability. So, you know, right, let's see, where would that be? Right about here, I guess, is where we've left the market. So from here, everything is either above or below the current price. So, and there's roughly equal probability because there's no evaluation on this chart or any kind of a thing like that that would take into consideration anything other than probability based on volatility and volatility does not take into consideration up move or down move at this particular point so therefore there's no way to weight this in this current way now there's some ways to tune this and i'm not an expert on this chart i'm, I'm fairly new to it but i know that going into the chart settings actually not chart settings going into the study settings and modifying this there are some ways that i can actually tune this so you can actually go into the upper probability and the lower probability and you can actually do some manipulation uh, i haven't played around with this a whole lot i'm not totally convinced that it can help us um, provide any additional information but you know you can certainly go in and tune this just a little bit to get a little uh, a little bit different information anyway i bring all of this up because i like i said i think it's a really interesting tool that perhaps might aid in your strike selection and um, kind of a fun one to play with. So uh, again, before you go out and trade this for real, make sure you paper trade and uh, try it out. Be sure that um, you know, you're comfortable with the, the particular study. As always, this does not change anything about the way that you enter trades, evaluate trades, manage trades. Um, you want to use proper money management. You always want to be comfortable um, with the uh, with the trading styles that you're using and the tools, and you want to make sure that you paper trade those first. And of course, as always, I'm not making any recommendations about what kind of a trade to enter or position or position size. I'm simply showing you some tools that might make your trading, uh, at the very least, more interesting, but at, at best, perhaps a little more uh, profitable. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and I hope you find a way to apply it to your current trading practices. Uh, as always, paper trade this and uh, give it a try. Uh, get familiar with the, the basic functionality and see how you can use it to enhance your trading. As always, watch for more videos that may be coming down the line. I'll try to be more diligent about creating new videos that might be valuable. If you have any suggestions, feel free to send them in to me at mark at successwithoptions.com and uh, I'll see if I can incorporate a few more of these uh, tutorial videos. And so with that, I'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see you down the road.